Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. I got this either as a present or I got it on discount, so I did not pay very much money for this and am thus not bitter on account of that. Untraceable movie thoughts. So near the end, the Owen hacks into her Jennifer's car and you know basically turns off all the you know and you know some of the way I mean we do rely on computers and you know in in just our car you know it, it you know, in the good old days you you know the the car was largely just mechanical and yeah those didn't have this kind of computer stuff and you know the the film set up this kind of you know what, what was it on star product placement it was product placement and the you know then near the end Owen talks to her through that and I guess the idea is that that was just a recording because she would so that she would think that he was watching her from somewhere else but then he doesn't respond when she and and it didn't it wasn't like a conversation it was a brief monologue he had there and I guess that all the while he was waiting in her back seat and yeah and the he somehow manages to she has to or she thinks she has to break the window that she can't unlock the door from inside that yeah, I'm, I'm almost certain that you could, do, I don't know, maybe maybe TX got into it or something. Now, on the IMDb fact, it's, you know, there's this thing of how did the, you know, how did the, the I, I guess Billy Burke must have been, yeah, how did he know that that was Jennifer's own basement and it was this, you know, as she was swinging back and forth, Owen was swinging his camera back, you know, doing doing pans. And he saw the, you know, the, he saw her basement when the, you know, earlier when the camera taping both Jennifer and the, and her daughter, Bibi, that you know, he saw the basement there, also there's, you know, that's one option, also there's the, the punching bag toy that he might have seen Griffin give her, and, you know, when, when he arrived at the party, that, that is slightly funny, the thing, you know, he showed up and he's like, Griffin told me that it was his birthday, you know, because he knew that if he said, oh, you should come to her daughter's birthday, he was like, ah, you know what, I got plans that day, but, like, you're not going to turn down going to the birthday of just your, you know, colleague, just like, you know, that would make him seem like an ass, so, yeah. Now, they're at the, the start, you know, he starts with this cat, and you know, I mean, part of it is, of course, that that was the cat of, I forget the name, but one, you know, Dead Meat. Dead Meat, who was involved in the the profiting or pop, you know, either, either money or popularity of Owen's father's suicide. You know, part, yeah, part of it is that, but, you know, it's almost like why... Like, yeah, and, and working his way up to human kills, almost must have been. And, you know, the... There's the, the whole, you know, biology thing, and all the, the you know, dead animals that, yeah. 
that 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 was like you know that and that is that is the the serial killer thing you know they they killed small animals when they were children then when they're adults they start killing people you know you don't go directly to killing animals and then prison not collecting two hundred dollars the but but yeah that it almost must have been that you know and, and that and so that the film opened with something gruesome without it being a human being dying and and also this thing of well we I mean we don't even know if you know that when when they first see a person in there they're like oh it might be fake you know and so and if if the movie did start with the death of a person then you know they might have gotten started sooner than yeah And briefly, I mentioned in the review that you know some critics point to there being homophobia. I guess what they're referring, like like I said in the review, I'm not sure that I that I think that that is homophobia but if you know if it is homophobia I figure that it's when Dowd you know talks to to the, the girl on the phone that you know he he thinks that this is the girl that he met that that he was going to go to the birthday party with that he had to say you know I'll have to go and that turns out to be Owen that's that's one and then the way that he interacts with the you know we briefly see him interact with one of you know with dead meat number two who profited from the suicide you know it, it looks like there might be some kind of you know you get this creepy vibe from him and yeah that's that's what I would say might be and and you know the and and the reviewers point to there being you know the yeah homophobia in the in in sounds of the lambs as well and I could definitely see how what's in the sounds of the lambs could read as homophobia I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil that movie here, but also of course a different a different phobia. I'm not sure I see it that way. I feel like I again I can understand if you if you don't really think much about it, if you just look at the surface, it looks pretty ugly, the depiction. But I think it's you know when when you know what you're looking at when you know what it's you know what it is depicting then you realize it's not phobia you know there there are some people who are like that and the movie isn't saying that that's what all for example gay people are like but you know it's it's also you know no matter how you look at it Sounds of the Lambs is an incredibly intelligent film and then it's a matter of do you think that it is that intelligent or do you think it still does have some you know some some of the, the there are some incredibly intelligent pieces of creative expression that still make a mistake still do something that yeah Now, Owen is this, you know, cute-looking, baby-faced killer. I haven't seen this actor in, I don't think, in anything else. But he has had roles in really big movies. And it seems like some of those roles were really big. And I'm really glad because he's incredibly talented in this. 
and this is you know if when you when you play a character like this you know that that's gonna make or break a career really you know if if people think that oh well you know I can't live, like like the the you know you know if if people look at the the performance and think oh well that's just that's he's incredibly creepy I can't sell him as anything other than incredibly creepy I I heard that people harassed the person who played the the killer in was it Dirty Harry, I think, one of these, you know, yeah, really horrific fictional killers in a movie from, you know, like the 70s or something, and yeah, because people look at that face and they think, oh, well, that's the guy, you know, they can't separate that performance from that, yeah. And you know the Owen of course says that the real killers are the people who log on you know the he you know he even types did you really think I would let you hurt that little girl you know that he doesn't think that he's the one doing it he thinks that he is basically the the hand that carries it out but that the will that sends this message to the hand are the people at home watching. After Griffin dies, you know, we we gen we actually have the this is too personal. I'm taking you off this case. Cliche. He owns two rifles and a handgun. Well, he's definitely American. Oh, he's a right wing up job. Okay, I guess he's the the guy we're looking for. I thought it was slightly amusing when you know early on when it's like you know oh he stole all my you know I I click the button and he stole all my account information and all my passwords which I conveniently left in a folder called passwords <laughs> you know it's and and thus showing and that genuinely you know that is one of the things that the film shows that's completely accurate you you know what was it music sharing I want to say and and like you know if you try to get music legally from you know a source that you don't know if you can trust yes they might steal your information put you know send you a virus or something and then she uses that to send a virus back so that they can get the guy and you know the the one critic points out the the whole tech aspect is the film's only hook and that's like I said in the review, that's just, that's not enough, quote unquote. And, you know, it's it's one of these serial killer movies where, you know, a woman tracks down this, this killer before being targeted herself by him. And several times, Owen is way too careless with, you know, the the... You know, I, I want to say it's it's dead meat number two heat lamp guy is the one who who's I should I should briefly say the reason I'm calling them dead meats one and two is I'm I'm trying to mock the the movies you know trying to make a big deal out of who these people are because you know, oh, to the serial killer, they deserved it, and then when, you know, when we know some part of us thinks, well, they enjoyed someone else's violence, you know, it's it's poetic justice or something, when really it's an excuse, the, the whole motive thing, that's an excuse for the film to put gruesome violence in front of the the camera. The, the characters are 
dead meat. They, they exist so that we can see them die. I mean, at the very least, when it's Dow dying, and then at the end, when it's Jennifer in danger, we know these characters. We've spent time with them. We care about them. Dead Meat 1 and 2, and Dead Meat... I want to say it's Dead Meat 1's cat, Dead Meat... Or did, or did Dead Meat... Did the, the cat owner... Did they... Did they die? They're, they're, I, I kind of lost track of who was who once they have the big info dump there at the end. This was this guy. This was the helicopter pilot. This guy... The, the glasses landed on his roof, and this car was the was owned by this guy, who's, yeah, anyway, the, the, the cat as well was, of course, dead meat. And poor thing, that, that cat didn't have anything to do with the, yeah, anyway. Of course, as Batman Returns tells us, cats and, like, you know, corpses that, you know, pe people who've died and, you know, f fell of a, a large dis distance, cats are not necessarily going to treat that individual well. But, yeah, that's, that is why I call them dead men. I mean no disrespect to actual, you know, victims of any situation similar to the film. But but yeah, the you know, Dead Meat the Yeah, Dead Meat number two who you know with with the heat lamp I believe that it it was you know the 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 gag came out of his mouth and then he mouths the the address, you know, and then with Dowd he you know he, he looks and him for a while, and the moment he's gone, Dowd starts blinking. You know, these these two would not have been that difficult to really, you know. I mean, just put put like what's it called? Blind blindfold him, or put him in the the Ludovico technique eye wider, you know, opener thing. And, and the other guy, I mean, just cover more of his face with it, tie it more. Yeah, you know, there are things you can do to prevent this, but yeah, the movie needed that to happen so that, oh, we have the address. Oh, no, too bad. It was the wrong address. Our shoes, what does that mean? And then, you know, yeah. and I do think, I mean, I could imagine that from you know, that that Owen talking to to Dowd before killing him and some during the, the kill, we do see him at least briefly talking to him, that that could have given him enough information that he realized, right, it was this, you know, thing. And him blinking, you know, was, was set up earlier. And I would say, oh, well, that's... that's good you know when when you see him start to do that you realize oh that's what he said earlier he's blinking Morse code but then when you really stop to think about you know like like a critic said and like I quoted in the main review the movie telegraphs every new development so really it's more that when you see him talk about that you almost immediately say he's gonna be a target and then he's gonna be blinking Morse code you know the the this whole thing of him dating is also just you know they're they're you know they're they're almost saying out loud you know you if if you know this this online dating stuff is risky you might have some you know they say she looks just like her profile pic you'll never see her again why not because you look nothing like your profile pic you know oh right so people lie and meet under false pretenses when they online date and you know oh he's dating several and he barely even knows them and it just yeah the, the movie is spelling out this is not going to end well I will say that there was some you know the the comedic relief that was gotten by way of 
the 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 whole dating online dating thing yeah some some of that was was fairly amusing and they you know they briefly considered you know we could we could tell the press about this and it's like you know and it's part you know they they don't they don't say strange sand effect in the film but that's you know what they're talking about if we tell them don't do this you know, don't look into this, please don't, you know, you're going to make it worse, then people will. You know, a number of people will, not everybody. Now, like I mentioned in the main review, the, the idea of this was based on this really horrifying, real-life, very public death. This of unexpected death. It was a female reporter who the idea was that she would be caught on one of those I, I don't know what they're called but the that the firemen pulled out so that you can jump from from very high up and land safely on it. I forget what exactly happened but something went wrong she died from that fall and this was a I want to say that they said on the contrary, it was live television, so, yeah, you know, a ton of people saw that. They didn't, you know, the, the news, yeah, it, it was shown live, you know, it's, this is the kind of thing that they respectfully don't show when it's, you know, when it happens and, yeah, you know, but when it happens live and it's so unexpected, there's nothing you can do. And the once this, you know, yeah. After this this fall, you know, some people were like, you know, writing. I yeah, I believe it was like writing text comments or something like that. And you know, some said this is the most awful thing I've ever seen. While others were giving, you know. Olympic ratings for the the jump. I do think that it's, you know, it's it's interesting to watch this, considering that you know three years after this, Colin Hanks, himself, you know, on Dexter's season seven, I mean six, you know, played what here he tracks, you know, a. A, a zealot, a deranged, methodically killing, you know, really macabre killer, and yeah, it was, you know, so in in this he tracks one, and in that, yeah. Now, you know the the. I, I liked the the bit with you know Dowd on the phone with he thinks is one of these you know I, I want to say it was his date at the yeah yeah his date at the the birthday party who you know she stayed around and she enjoyed the party with the others excuse me you know and then you know we see that it's actually being you know, what was it? She said, spoofed. Yeah. You know, and, and you see him sitting there saying that that's true. I'm a total catch. You know, very the Terminator. And, you know, then the, the you know, Dowd is killed because he got closer and closer to figuring out who Owen was. And then near the very end, Jen is almost killed for having gotten you know, for and by then she's figured out who Owen is. And you know, of course Jen's daughter, you know, becomes involved as well. You know, this is the bride's daughter, BB, and Spider-Man 3's Flint Marco's sick daughter. So 
you know something is going to go really wrong with her. And, you know, the, the, the movie and the killer both, you know, did you really think I would let you harm that, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's setting up. Actually, I suppose that is one of the film's more clever, you know, you think that something is going to happen to this, to her, to this kid, and then it doesn't, and kind of, you know, the, really the, if, if, it would be stronger if he didn't type out, you know, did you really think? But, you know, it is a time where the film says something awful is going to happen, and then it doesn't, and then it kind of, you know, the, it brings up the emotions in the, the viewer that, like, you know, when you expect something, you, that you're going to see something awful, but it's fiction, so, you know, you can, you know, life goes on afterwards. And then it doesn't follow through on that, and you're left just sitting there having to deal with these emotions without having had the release or relief that you expected to come. And, you know, this girl was an amazing actor you know, at age, like, six and seven. The... There at the end, you know, we, we see that there are over 33,000 threads of comments. I don't think that whoever, like, wrote that bit or designed the graphic for that or something knew what a thread is. There is no way that there are 33,000 different threads, entire threads, not comments, but entire different threads from this, I mean, as far as we see, it's been going on for, you know, minutes. There's no real indication, yeah, yeah, it's, we see it practically in real time. I don't know, I guess the, yeah, and, and it can't have been that they commented it can't have been commenting from the last kill, because we see that he locks down. Or I guess it's possible that he doesn't delete them. Okay, actually, I suppose if 33,000 threads is from all the kills combined, but then why would it show it under the, the most recent? Wouldn't it just... They, if, if that's what they mean, if they mean that it's for all of them combined, they should have made that clearer. Because we never, in all of them, we never see someone comment, we, we never see a comment someone made on the last Kill With Me stream that, you know, that we then see, you know, we, when, when we, we're seeing Dead Me 2 die, we don't see comments left over from Dead Meat 1, so it would appear that he clears it every time, but, yeah. And, you know, as the, you know, there's this one, like, kind of establishing shot of, you know, where where you're hearing, like, I guess people who called into news sh show, you know, yeah, n news and commentary shows and such, and like saying, oh, I've got a list of people that they could kill next, and so, you know, and it's just, I get where you're going for, but I really don't buy that after someone has been tortured to death live, that someone would actually call in and say, you know, put their voice and put, you know, considering that there is some chance that their their call is going to be traced, would actually say, I have other people that I think they should kill. That's, yeah. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.